this woman to be married? We do. Please be seated. <laughs> Welcome family, friends, and loved ones. For those who don't know me, I'm Michael Coyne, good friend of Lauren and Peters. We're gathered here today to celebrate the love and commitment of Lauren and Peter by joining them in marriage. You've come here to share in this formal commitment they make to one another, to offer your love and support to this union, and to allow Lauren and Peter to start their married life together, surrounded by those closest to them. We know that many of you have traveled a great distance to be here. So on behalf of Lauren and Peter, thank you for being here. Lauren and Peter, marriage is one of the most important decisions you make in life. But a ceremony does not create a marriage your actions do. Your marriage will be made through love and dedication, listening and believing in each other, laughing together and forgiving each other again and again. Today's ceremony affirms and bears witness to your joint and solemn commitment to stand together as partners in life. Peter, do you take Lauren to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Lauren, do you take Peter to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Good start. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren and Peter have asked some friends and family to do a, a few readings. Sarah? A reading from Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not jealous. It's not pompous. It's not inflated. It's not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It's not quick-tempered. It does not fraud over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices over the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Chad? It's you I like, not the things you wear, not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way down deep inside you, not the things that hide you, not your toys, they're just beside you. It's you I like, every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new, I hope that you remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you. It's you I like. Thank you. A loving marriage does not exist in isolation. Will all of you, friends and family of Lauren and Peter, promise to support them in their marriage and remind them of their love for each other? 
So before we do the vows and exchanging of rings, I want to say a few words. I've had the pleasure of knowing you both for many years and have seen many qualities in each of you that will serve you well in your marriage to come. I want to highlight some of these qualities for the group, but I didn't want to rely only on my observations. So I recruited some help of other friends and family members. My favorite story about Peter comes from his high school years playing soccer. Peter was an accomplished player and was about to take a critical penalty kick in a big game. He approaches the stationary ball, pulls back his leg to strike, and apparently missed essentially the entire ball. <laughs> Witnesses say that perhaps a single cleat made contact with the top of the ball. <laughs> you can imagine the embarrassment, and apparently his teammates did not let him forget it. So what did Peter do? Well, he spent that summer kicking hundreds of penalty kicks in his backyard. And he returned the next season, and he said he wanted to be the one to kick penalty kicks. And I'm told he never missed another one throughout high school. <laughs> Resilience and commitment, Peter, on behalf of every husband in the room, these are qualities that will serve you well in marriage. <laughs> When one of Lauren's friends was about to get married, during the week leading up to that wedding, Lauren sent her daily videos of Lauren lip-syncing wedding songs <laughs> just to get her friend pumped up for the wedding. <laughs> and there was the time that Lauren invited another of her friend over after that friend had just had a tough breakup. Lauren stayed up late with her to help her see the bright side. And by the end of the long evening, with the help of a bit of sangria, <laughs> we were both laughing together. Oh, and then Lauren had to wake up at 6 a.m. to run a 5K the next day. <laughs> Maybe not your best race, but you were there for your friend when she needed you. Lauren, your generous optimism will serve you and Peter well in your marriage. Lastly, I wanted to pass on a bit of marriage advice. And as I have only four years of marriage under my belt, I also crowdsourced for this. <laughs> Went to your family members, from siblings to grandparents. First. Let your spouse be themselves. Don't try to change them. Yes, you will grow and change over time, but don't try to mold the other person. Give them space when they need it and love them for who they are. Second, listen to each other. When you, dis when you disagree, don't be dismissive of the other person's point of view. And when you argue, as all couples do, try not to say anything you'll regret after the fight is over. It sounds easy, but it can be hard at times. Finally, marriages at times need to be rejuvenated. Think about this moment right now, how you feel about each other right now. Hold on to that. Come back to it as often as you like. All right, the vows. Lauren, repeat after me. I, Lauren, take you, Peter, to be my beloved husband. To have and to hold you. To honor you, to treasure you, to be at your side in sorrow and in joy, in good times and in bad, and to love and cherish you always. I promise you this from my heart for all the days of my life. Peter, repeat after me. I, Peter, take you, Lauren, to be my beloved wife. Peter, take you, Lauren, to be my beloved wife. To have and to hold you. To honor you, to treasure you. To honor you, to treasure you. To be at your side in sorrow and in joy. To be at your side in sorrow and in joy. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. To love and cherish you always. To love and cherish you always. I promise you this from my heart. I promise you this from my heart. For all the days of my life. For all the days of my life. Philip, uh, please have the rings. Thanks. <clears throat> Peter, repeat after me as you place the ring on Lauren's left hand. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and commitment. As a symbol of my love and commitment. Lauren, repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and commitment.
by the power vested in me by the District of Columbia. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. I present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. McElroy. And after that recital, the teacher pulled me aside and said, you know what, 
I heard Lauren say happy birthday, and I, I teach a class of high schoolers, but I think she might fit in. I think she has a talent, so I'd like to put her in voice. So I said, okay. So at that next recital, we see all the beautiful high school girls come out with their mature voices. At the very end comes this teeny little five-year-old Lauren. She comes on the stage, and everybody leans in expecting this teeny little voice. And let me tell you, out came the most beautiful, powerful rendition of Over the Rainbow I ever heard in my life. I was stunned, the audience was stunned, and as Lauren's aunts know, I can't hear Lauren sing without tissue between my eyes. And I think what she realized that her passion for music really touched people and it brought out emotions that that is just kind of scary sometimes. So that's one of Lauren's passions. The second one, she found in middle school. It wasn't a boy. It was a science class. She came home all to say about cells. And I'm like, Lauren, cells? We're from a math family. What are you excited about? And she goes, I really like these cells. And I go, okay. So she decides she's going to be a doctor. Now, we have a lot of doctors here. And you all know it's a very long, difficult path. It takes a lot of work and dedication and sacrifice. So along Lauren's journey, the invitation to go to Mississippi came along to be a dermatologist. Now, Lauren did not want to be any other kind of doctor but a dermatologist. But she really wasn't all that keen about going to the South. She had never been there. <laughs> and she has a deathly fear of five. <laughs> but so Lauren, you want to be a dermatologist, you're going to Mississippi. <laughs> so she packed her and off she went. And we learned three things from the South very quickly. Number one, if you're a mother and you mean business, you call your daughter by two first names. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have to call Lauren Michelle, Lauren Michelle Gray. Number two, there's always a festival to attend. Festivals everywhere. And number three, people seem to pair up very early in age, so there was a shortage of singles. So two years, we figured Lauren, she'll do her three years, and when she gets somewhere else, she'll meet her Mr. Wright. Well, two years into this, she calls me. She's getting ready for a festival, of course. <laughs> what do I wear? What do I wear? It's really important because there's not one, but two eligible gentlemen that she's going to meet. So the people in the room had identified these guys. And Lauren was just so excited. And this guy, my guy. And I said, Lauren, I, I hate to burst your bubble, but I don't think this is going to pan out. There's going to be guy number three. She goes, Mom, it's been two years. I haven't even seen a single guy. <laughs> I go, well, whatever. She you know, blows me off. And I said, all right, there's going to be a day. Just keep your eyes open. So you can guess, the next day she calls me. She's on cloud nine. And what do you know, as Lauren's grandfather likes to call him, a red butler, number three. <laughs> Hello, Peter. Aww. So Peter, as much as Lauren likes to think I can tell the future, <laughs> I could not have imagined a more kind and gentle person for Lauren. And you are just, keep Lauren in the moment. You appreciate her sense of humor. And you share her curiosity for the adventures of life. And I'm so happy you're going to go through life together. When I see the two of you together, it just warms my heart so apparent. I'm sure Margaret and then Charles and Bill and Jimmy and Mark, we all just are so happy that you're together and you're going to start a new life together. And I knew Peter was a keeper when Lauren called me and said, Peter's going to be the goat yoga. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but Jamie, it sounds very Mormon, right? All right, so if you would all raise your glass, I'd like to propose the toast. I'm going to borrow from Elizabeth Browning. Love is not what makes the world go round. Love is what makes the ride worthwhile. And here's to a long, healthy, and happy ride as you take your giant leap into marriage today. Cheers. Hey. Here because you know the hospitality of 
kindness that we've been shown has been uh, just exceptional. You know, being from the South, you kind of always say, well, you know, the South, we're always just, everybody's friendly and all that. You guys couldn't have been more welcoming, more uh, hospitable, if that's a word. And uh, so anyway, thank you all for welcoming us. And, and I'm, I'm going to do the prayer, and I'm going to ask that you bow your head and close your eyes so you can't see I'm reading this prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed day and for your providence that brought Peter and Lauren together. We thank you for the family and friends gathered here together today to witness this blessed union. And we now ask that you would stretch out your hand from heaven and bless this food and drink of your servants and those that prepared it and those of us that are about to partake for your holy always, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. And may I also say, uh, my wife and I are Orthodox Christians and we have a saying, we ask God would grant them many years. So I would say to Lauren and Peter, may God grant you many, many years. Amen. First thing I want to say that this is a really tough act to follow. Don Charlie. <laughs> Charles Charlie, whatever you want to be called. Not quite as good as hers, but very good. <laughs> Very good. So today is incredibly special. I'm sorry for my back to you guys. Um, I'll try to turn around every once in a while. But um, the toast is actually to the couple, the wedding couple. And uh, before we get there, there's so many things you want to talk about. We did not have a rehearsal dinner, so we were going to talk about Lauren sticking peanuts up her peas up her nose. Uh, a whole bunch of things that we would obviously talk about. And thank goodness she got those out of her nose because I thought we were going to the hospital and next thing you know, just push here and blow. Oh, look, remarkably worked. So maybe that's how she became a doctor. I also want to say to this room, you know when they say, is there a doctor on the plane? With this group, you need to specify what your problem is. Because we got a whole bunch of disciplines going on over here, especially. <laughs> So, I remember, and Donna's already talked a little bit about it, so Jenny and I were, uh, were, we took Warren down to Mississippi. And Warren was living in D.C. Well, she actually grew up in D.C. and then went to Charlottesville and back to D.C. So we're driving down, excuse me, we flew down to go find her a place. And we're looking around, and sorry for those of you that are from Jackson, I apologize. <laughs> but there's really not a lot going on there. So it's kind of like compared to D.C., it's like, is this the spot that you want to be in? She's like, well, Dad, that's the only spot they have. So it's like, okay, so we found her spot. Great, everything's taken care of. So now it's time to drive her down there. And of course, Lauren thought she was going to jail. You know, and she kept saying, Dad, this is the deep south. So it's only, it's only like five lines, but I'm going to screw it up. So this is the toast, everybody. Please take your champagne glasses. The toast is, may God be with you and bless you. May you live to see your children's children. May you be poor in misfortunes and rich in blessings. May you know nothing but happiness from this day forward. Cheers.
Thank you. 